Hey everybody, pretty decent two slide bunkhouse coming in here. I have the weight posted right down here on screen right about now. I uh, unfortunately I wasn't able to find a weight tag on the unit itself, so I have to get that on the title, which I don't have access to at the time of this filming. Overall, it looks pretty good. The folks just decided, eh, maybe we're done with the travel trailer. Maybe it's time for us to get into something like a fifth wheel, and that's the only reason she's here and swapped her out. You can see they upgraded to the more ride steps, and like any used RV, there's a couple little blemishes here and there, nothing major. Like, I haven't seen leaks, I haven't seen structural damage, nothing scary. So, you know, just kind of like when you get a used car with like a ding on the bumper, it's part of the reason that it's gonna save you a little bit of money. And overall, I think she's pretty good. The weight is probably going to fall within the realm of half ton towability, but you gotta remember this is a long trailer. So you want a like a heavier payload, a stiffer suspension package if you're gonna get into something like that, whereas something like a three quarter ton truck would handle this all day long, all day long. And when this is a floor plan that like everybody in the RV industry makes, I'm always very interested to see like how does a different manufacturer come up, uh, you know, with their equipment package here. And I think that this one was optioned in a way that a lot of people are going to see as unusual at first, but it actually, I do think makes a lot of sense. And specifically the freestanding table in a bunkhouse model like this, a lot of people instantly go, wait, what now? Shouldn't that be a booth? And that is certainly the more traditional way to go. But think about it. You can still seat four people at that dining table. You've got a little bit more leg room. You don't feel like you're sliding into the booth at Denny's. And if you need the extra sleeping, that is where this big trifold sleeper sofa comes into play. Now, I like the big windows on here. I really would have liked to have seen some large windows on the sides of the slides as well. Um, the incandescent bulbs here are also something that I think one of the main things I would do is uh, as soon as I got this RV, I'd probably go through and do some LED uh, replacements. Save a little energy, give me a little bit more light. Uh, that being said, though, there's certainly nothing insufficient about what's going on in here. It is a little dimmer than what I would prefer, but it's certainly perfectly functional, especially, I mean, you know, even for our purposes today. Um, interesting uh, combination of features here too, a solid surface countertop in the kitchen. And part of what you're seeing there is the, uh, the Antera. A lot of you folks have probably not heard from it. What you don't realize is this is actually a way more common camper uh, than, than initially meets the eye. Uh, over at the Cruiser RV Company, they actually make about five or six trailers that are nearly identical with one another, all under a slightly different name. So when you see things like uh, this Antera Radiance Viewfinder MPG. All of these things are nearly the exact same trailer by the same company, uh, by the same people, out of the same facility. Actually, the uh, um, Sundance Travel Trailers by Heartland RV, also technically basically a like clone of this thing, if that makes any sense to you. Now over here in the bathroom, I like the porcelain foot flush tool. I think that is a nice call. I like the way that that toilet's angled a little bit. It gave a bigger person like me some extra headroom here. Or headroom. What? No. Leg room. <laughs> the uh, double uh, hanging bars there. I, I suspect that was probably... Wait a minute. Triple. Triple bars. I bet those triple towel bars were added by the previous owners. I could be wrong, though. That is a dead bolting uh, entry door, by the way. And the bathroom here, nothing to necessarily write home about, but there's nothing bad about it. I like the, the vaulted ceiling plus the skylight combo will give a taller person like me more headroom in there. And that um, the, the shower door curtain combo hybrid being on a track with a radius at the top, it gives me some elbow room and it keeps that... <laughs> you guys ever watch like the nature documentaries when they're underwater and like a squid attacks somebody and it's just like, it's like a sheet. It's like a plastic bag attacking somebody underwater. There's no getting away from it. Sometimes that's how those shower curtains feel to me, like a killer Jacques Cousteau kind of squid underwater, 20,000 leagues under the sea. A window in the slide here is something I would have welcomed, but at the same time, it is also saving us money by not being there, and people don't think about this, improving our insulation by not being in there. It'll make that sleeping space more uh, easily temperature controlled in summertime and wintertime. Um, this is not a hard winter camper. I shouldn't have phrased it that way. This is an extended season model. Now down here we've got a uh, like a bifold sleeper sofa, and obviously you saw the bunk above. 
it is on some gas struts though so it is just that easy to get up out of the way you know there's no camera magic involved in anything like that now when we take a quick pivot over here uh, you can see that there's all kinds of good storage going on in this uh, lower bunk space I like that ladder built right in so you don't got to throw the kids to the upper bed I uh, you know maybe somebody uh, was inclined to roll out of the bed so it looks like they've installed a little hey don't fall out of bed screen here I don't know exactly what they have tapped into I haven't been able to like grab a stud finder and uh, properly calibrate it. My coat is too thick, so I can't hold the stud finder up to my chest to calibrate it properly, which every guy knows is the proper way to calibrate a stud finder, right? Um, anyway, my point is I want to just exercise a little caution, folks. If you do take this trailer home, that is something that if you have a little kid you're worried about rolling out of bed, let's double check that. I want to put safety first, you know what I mean? Um, but uh, back to the storage here, there's a little more than meets the eye. If we crack this open, you can see, you know, dual closets, triple dresser drawers, a little mini entertainment center there as well. And once again, just that ladder so you don't have to throw out your rotator cuff to get the kid into that uh, upper bed area. I also like that each little bunk thing has its own little, you know, nightlight space. The uh, moving forward here. Um, we already kind of talked about the height of it, and it is interesting to me, they give us one window there, but not on the opposite side of the slide. I haven't, I don't know, that seems like a, you know what, never mind. I know exactly why they didn't do it. If we put a window right there, what are you going to look at? The only thing you're going to see outside that window is this slide over here. You're not going to get, you're not going to get any light. You're not going to get significant airflow because there's there's just this little this little gap outside of the RV. Okay, so I retract my statement about the window. Apologies. I hope you appreciate the fact that I'm hey willing to say hey I don't always get it right either. <laughs> uh, there are dual sliding privacy doors up here for the bedroom, and we are must be running low on battery power. The light should still be a little bit brighter than that. But let's go ahead and crack open the kitchen space here. Take just a little pass around, give you a look at that uh, sliding bedroom door. And uh, also keep in mind, the uh, TV, if you choose to add one, that little TV hutch can actually pivot around to uh, face the master bedroom as well. You do need to naturally have the bedroom doors open to do that, but hey. Um, we've got a 60 by 80 True Queen in here. That is something that a lot of times a very compact private bedroom like this will tend to lack. So anytime I see one, I want to make sure you're aware of it. And I love that big window by the campsite and the skylight up here. The extra light, the extra airflow you're going to get from that in what is uh, otherwise, you know, a pretty compact function space. And the idea here, some people will sometimes ask, why do the kids get the bunkhouse and mom and dad get the small bedroom? Here's the reason. Mom and dad didn't get the small bedroom. On a rainy day, if you're stuck inside the camper, mom and dad, you own the house. You're going to spend your time here. The kids, you're going to say, go to your room. So the good news is, with a larger room back there, they're less inclined to, you know, be tripping over each other, poking each other, driving each other crazy, and everyone's going to get along just fine. And in case you're wondering if my voice sounds a little funny, um, yeah, the outside portion of this video that you're about to finish seeing, I recorded yesterday, October 30th, and today is October 31st, Halloween. I'm actually wearing uh, a uh, Halloween mask right now, and I realized I never took it off. <laughs> And right as we step outside, you see those Moride stable steps. Those were an aftermarket upgrade applied by the previous owner. In case you're curious, whether it's the Moride steps, the LCI steps, some form of stable step can be applied to almost any trailer. And you can see where they have the original steps still in place. And if you're curious, you can actually remove those steps and have uh, Moride makes like a little um, toolbox, a little cargo box that you could put right there uh, to kind of repurpose that space. You need to lift the steps to get to the toolbox, but it's better than it being a completely wasted space you know the exterior looks good i don't see any like significant dings or bangs or fading or anything like that the nose cap is nice and gleaming i don't see the the decals flaking power tongue jack on the front being a white motorhead kind of makes me think that was an aftermarket upgrade it doesn't really matter the fact is it's here uh i think it's got like almost a big bulbous nose on the front of it, doesn't it? Sort of looks like my big balding head approaching me in the mirror when I wake up every morning and head to the bathroom. All uh, power corner stabilizer jacks as well, so everything's push button simple. It's not 
what people would often call an Arctic or Four Seasons camper. It does have a uh, enclosed heated belly, so you'll get extended seasons out of this, is kind of what that means. Slick looking frameless windows on it. Uh, dress it up pretty nicely on the outside too. Those aluminum wheels never hurt either. Between the two slides, let me get up here a little bit closer. This is basically your exterior docking station. I kind of like how it's all sort of hidden away in here. I really would have liked it if they'd have found a way to put like an outside shower here. This would have made a perfect little, like you could put a curtain up, have a little outside shower station above your uh, stinky slinky hookup center right there. Tires look good, I, I, you know, tires usually, the only way they tend to get worn down on a towable RV like this is if somebody overloaded the RV. And uh, I don't see where that happened here. Uh, the camper does use Schwintech slides uh, on both slide systems, or well, both slides, they use a Schwintech system, which uh, for just general seating is probably okay. I don't normally like to see Schwintech slides on uh, our systems on slides this deep, but again, since there's not like big heavy kitchen stuff in it, it's mostly just a hollow space, It'll it, it should be fine, it's just personal things. I would like to see a ladder on the back of this. Now, we're not a dealer of this product brand new, so uh, I don't know if it's ladder capable. That is something that if you're really curious about, uh, you can give your salesperson here at Halid RV a call. We can get the VIN of this. We can call the Cruiser RV company, and then they can get with our parts and service department in there, and we can determine with 100% assurance if this is or is not ladder capable. Standing here right now, I just don't know some of those under the skin elements since I you know, don't really get a chance to tour the factory of a brand that we don't carry here at Halid RV. I like the way this camp kitchen's organized though. It is, uh, I, it's not that it's necessarily unusual or different from any other camp kitchen, it's just well done. Got the bigger fridge, nice cabinet space out here though. They, they did go more aggressive there and I am happy to see that. Easy reach outlets, sink with a real drain built right in, uh, drains to a holding tank, good prep space. And uh, if you're not using it, you can slide that cooktop out of the way. And since it has a cooktop there, it means it has a gas grill quick connect below, which means if you wanna do something like some black stone griddling, you can. Again, if I see something, I'm going to say something. And all I've really found in this RV are little blemishes, like little contact paper peel right there, tiny amount of swelling on the countertop right there. And I hope you appreciate the fact that we're going way out of our way to even point out little things like that. I, you know, when you folks come here, the camera doesn't always see those little details easily. And I don't want you getting all the way here and going, oh, I didn't know about that. I didn't know about that. I want you to know exactly what you're seeing when you get here. Like right here from some wind buffeting, unfortunately, that fender trim cracked a little bit. It's not hurting the function of the RV. It just is what it is. It's kind of like the equivalent of if, uh, like my car had a ding in the bumper when I bought it. Didn't stop me from driving it. Hasn't stopped me from driving it every day since. Uh, and again, direct entry door here into the bathroom. This is so handy right next to the camp kitchen because the toilet and the fridge are the two primary reasons everybody's in and out of the RV all the time. So being able to cut down on that foot traffic is so, so beneficial. So like I said, overall, I don't really see anything that scares me too awful much. A couple little nicks here and there, but again, I hope you appreciate the extreme transparency with which we conduct ourselves here at Halid RV. Always know you can buy from confidence. Always know if we don't have the answers, we won't just make something up. We'll go find the answers for you. So if you have a trade, uh, if you need financing, uh, if you just want to write a check, we, we're okay with that too. Whatever you need, we're here to take care of you. So stay safe, take care, have fun. I did that backwards today, everyone. <laughs>